Hello, hello. Welcome. Now, this game I've played for a long time, Star Trek Online. It's a great game. It's completely free. Free to download, free to play. Now, I'm going to start by outlaying the three kinds of currencies. Now, there's credits. Credits can be earned from playing missions. And you can also earn them from going to the exchange and selling equipment that's dropped from enemies killed in battle by the ships or um, ground forces. Ground forces drop ground equipment, ship ships in space drop ship equipment so you access the exchange there's various places on different planets and um, star bases um, right now I'm on new Romulus now one way is to learn a particular item know what it is search for it and some some particular items actually fetch quite a good price so if you go to that item you search it and you see a whole bunch of them that are selling for expensive sometimes you might find randomly someone who's just trying to get rid of it they've undercut the price so you take that one if you have enough credits and then you relist it at higher than the price you bought it but just under the price that everyone else is selling it at. Now the hope there is that if you can do that enough times, you'll end up getting credits in the millions because some high ticket items that are sought after, they cost a lot of credits. And these are in particular items that are taken out of lock boxes, which will I'll, I'll talk more about that when I get to the other currencies. Um, oh, actually, there's four currencies. But the the other one's only relevant if you actually open lockboxes. So the second type is dilithium. Now, dilithium you can get from duty officer missions. You can get it from fleet admiral Admiralty missions, which I haven't got access to on this character, but essentially they're basically like um, They're missions that you send duty officers who aren't part of your crew or actively They're just basically ship crew that are basically cards and you use those cards to apply to different missions that require different um, qualifications um, that's the difference between duty officers and bridge officers bridge officers are actually more interactive they're part of a team that you have like this particular lady here she's one of the first you get when you start the game on this faction she's a Vulcan lady now with bridge officers you can get rid of them and get more of them as you see fit. You can get them from the exchange, you can get them from vendors at Starbase, although they're basic, there's three tiers obviously, you know, you've got your common, your, your uncommon, your rare and your very rare. With equipment they have an extra level which is ultra. The equipment's the same, common, uncommon, rare, ultra rare, uh, very rare, and then ultra rare. And the colors are gray, green, purple, uh, gray, green, blue, purple, and orange, which is pretty much the case for most role-playing games. And I realize that this is boring, I'm not doing a lot, I'm just running around, so to finish it off, I will tell you quickly about Zen. Zen is a currency that you have to pay real-world money for. Whatever country you live in, 
the currency that you um, use has to be figured into US dollars and that is currency that you th this currency Zen you actually have to buy with real-world money whether it's through PayPal um, credit card uh, unfortunately um, for a lot of people who don't have the patience or the time to grind and get their own T6 ship that's account wide unlocked um, they just go ahead and buy it but uh, I wouldn't recommend that if you have the patience you can grind now this is what I'm going to show you grinding for ships um, oh yes the the other thing Lobi Lobi is a currency you get from unlocking lockboxes with lockbox keys this is Lobi if you want to access the Lobi store well, these are duty officers from an overflow bag I bought a bunch of them to donate to something I'll, I'll explain about that another time but this is Lobi it opens this you double click on it it opens this store now you can buy ships these are all T6 ships now the problem with the Lobi crystal board ships is once you open the box they are only unlocked on the character you purchased and, un and opened the box on it's not an account wide unlock unfortunately so it's the same with all of these things space gear ground gear anything you buy in the lobby store is only unlocked on the character you purchased it with so if you want to purchase a t6 ship for another character then you have to go to the banking system you've got your your personal bank your account bank and your fleet bank if you're part of a fleet I recommend it because it gives you some bonuses and buffs and also allows you to buy other things that's mail different thing uh, access bank okay account bank so these are slots that you can put account unlocked things in and share them with the other characters these are worth um, utilizing when you if if not when if you are into crafting things like ship equipment really good ship equipment now that being said there is another way to get a t6 ship that's account wide unlock that's free unfortunately it takes a bit of grinding so here's what I'm gonna do open this tab um, go to events and you look for an event now these are regular things if you don't see one that enables you to get a ship a t6 ship then just wait and one will come up at the moment one's running it's kind of midway through if you got onto it right now you could probably um, join it and play it uh, so what you do is you click one of these options there's new missions that you can play uh, they tend to take a while because the, the newer missions are really quite long and involved so or you can just do a task force operation this one's a good one it's just a shoot and scoot um, join TFO it'll come up straight away because everyone wants this everyone's participating so there will always be teams available to join it's a group co-op mission and you just wait and surely enough you'll beam up now you have to do these things approximately 20 times they run for a month and it resets every 20 hours so if you actually find you've fallen behind and you've got 10 to do and only eight days to do it if you can manage to swing it by getting onto it each 20 hours you could probably just scrape through by the skin of your teeth uh, unfortunately it doesn't seem to be 
engaging. Yeah, it won't let me join because Oh, there we go. <laughs> Bit of a delayed reaction. Do your job, man. Do your job. Alright, so here we go. Now, this, this is from an episode of The Next Generation where Captain Picard ends up being captured and assimilated by the Borg. It's a zombie apocalypse introduced to Star Trek. Attention all hands. This is Admiral Hammond. The Borg are en route to the Sol system. Starfleet forces will make our stand here at Wolf 359. We'll do all we can to stop the Borg. More importantly, we'll mitigate our losses as best we can. Protect Starfleet vessels and personnel whenever possible. Okay. The Borg cube is powerful destroy as many of its weapons as possible to reduce its power in combat. Be advised, the Borg can regenerate lost weapons over time. Be mindful of this out there. Okay. We've received reports that the Borg try to capture ships and Ah, oh, shut up! God, man can go on. Alright. So with this, these are your bridge officers. When you have enough, you can set up a ground crew team, like a, an away team, that's got crew members that are best suited for ground operations, and uh, a bridge crew your team. Your bridge crew team, zero, zero, you you'll want to intervene, we will destroy team you. members with specific space traits that are specific to space like not just your um these thingies but um space traits like giving you critical bonus efficiency Um, piracy is another one. Salvage. They're all they're all bonuses that enable you to um, get an extra ability in space.
What happened to that one? Just disappeared into nothing. Now when you play these task force operations, you'll find that some people, you look at them and they've just got these super powered ships that are able to do things that you just like, wow, just blow your mind. They're people that have really done research into how to build a really great ship. And unfortunately that's something that takes time and a willing person who will who will give you time to give you instruction as to how best to go about that. Um, over, over the course of some videos I'll try and give you as much of the basics as I can from what limited knowledge I have. Now, I've been playing for ages and even I don't know half the stuff some of these people have figured out. But if I can give you a foothold, then um, hopefully that'll improve your experience and uh, you'll get hungry for more and find these things out. Maybe even teach me one day. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting ripped apart. Oh no, oh no. Oh, that was close. really bad. I just hit amazing maneuvers and that's why I have this sudden burst of speed and maneuverability. Reduce my speed because these escape pods are hard to rescue if you're going fast. You'll find that you'll go out of range really quickly. Tip for young players, torpedoes don't do much damage for the most part if you haven't dropped their shields first. So beam weapons until you get past their shields. And then torpedoes once you've got it. It's like uh, working the guard until you can get your uppercut in.
Pop it like a balloon. A lot going on in this mission, I tell you. I didn't expect the video to be this long, but I wanted to get some explanations out. I might cut it in half, actually. Oh wow! So much going on. Oof. And it's done. That was intense. Shoot and scoot. If you start getting too damaged, do your best to scoot away. Now these, this character doesn't... Oh, shut up! You done? Okay, now I can hear myself think. Okay, these marks, fleet marks, are specifically used in fleet projects. So, as I said earlier, you become a member of a fleet, you'll um, be able to contribute towards making that fleet better, which unlocks different um, vendors that you can purchase different and better stuff from. And there's um, reputation marks. Now, there's a whole bunch of them. There's Task Force Omega, which is basically the deal with the four. A lot of the equipment you can get access to once you unlock that reputation is tends to be Borg specific. Um, same, same with uh, New Romulus. If you have a Romulan character, that's the one you really want to work on because although you can apply the equipment that you get to any ship. It's, it goes hand in hand with Romulan ships, it, it really does. And there's also Riemann equipment you can get, like um, vanity shields, things like that, that give you a ship, uh, shimmering effect. Uh, like for example, um, I'll just pick one for now. Uh, I'll grab that one. Congratulations. There you go, it gives you a $480 dilithium. Um, bunch of bonuses just for doing that. Um, the first one for the day gives you more than if you did it a bunch of times in a single day. So the first time per day gives you that. Um, this video has gone on for too long, so I'm going to quickly wrap it up by... saying that there's a there's a lot to this game um it takes a, a fair bit to learn uh there's good tutorials at the start of the game if you're a first time player and you're making your first character ever um it it will it will talk you through it but there's so much that they don't tell you that um even at the basic level will will benefit you like for example when you're setting up your ship uh, I'll go into more detail in a diff in another in another video but because this has gone far too long setting up your ship pick a weapon type and then stick to that weapon type and build your ship to function around that weapon type to get the most out of it uh, I've gone for phaser I tend to be a bit 
a bit anal about the weapon type I apply to the characters. Like if I have a Klingon character, I'll generally keep uh, stick to disruptors on that character. If I have a Romulan character, I tend to stick to plasma weapons. If I have a Federation character, I tend to stick to um, phaser weapons. But there's anti-proton, there's tetrion, there's all different weapon types. And, you know, you can choose which one you like best. Uh, but for now, uh, that's it for this one. First one of all time. Um, hit the like button, subscribe, and um, I'll be back and hopefully with a shorter video so that it doesn't drag on for this long. But there's so much to this game. It just You can just go on and on and on. <laughs>